It is now 8.36 here at WCCO. Welcome back as we wrap up this hour. And I tell you, um, I'm excited to interview Brian Fleming. Why? Well, let me tell you, we are more than two years removed from the start of the pandemic, and schools are still deeply impacted. Even after a more normal school year in 2021-22, students and teachers' mental health is still being affected, and I know that because I see some of it in some of my nieces and great nieces and nephews. Now, according to a recent study conducted by Brown University, youth test scores have also seen a dip across the board. Now, Brian Fleming, the president of Groves Learning Organization, a Minnesota-based nonprofit that is focused on helping students who struggle with learning disabilities and attention disorders, joins us now to talk about why COVID had such an effect on students and teachers and what Groves Academy is doing to mitigate the pandemic's impact on all at the school. And he joins us now um, on the John Schuster Caldwell Banker Hotline. How are you, Brian? Good evening, Geraldine. It's so good to hear your voice and be with you. I'm doing just fine. Thank you. You sound great. Such a great, um, I was so excited to interview you tonight. And of course, as we talk about education and COVID, it doesn't seem to have shifted very much at all. Students, um, from what I can see in my own grandchildren, can you believe I have grandchildren? Yes. Um, but I've noticed that they too have really suffered from not being able to get all that they need. And it's difficult to try to figure out all that a student needs when every student is so different. Do you agree? I certainly do, Gerilyn. And, and, you know, m- many of us think that we're getting closer to a complete return to normal, air quotes, normal in education. Um, but the impact that COVID and remote learning had is still being felt. We know for certain now that in districts here in Minnesota and nationwide, those districts that went remote, achievement growth was lower for all subgroups and especially hit hardest academically were students who attended high poverty schools. Mm -hmm. Right here in Minnesota, only 48% of our third graders scored as proficient on standardized reading tests last year. And that's down from 57% five years ago in 2017. So so clearly COVID impacts are are being felt and be seen in, in this data. Here's what frightens me, Brian. I don't know how people are really taking that in, how the parents are taking it in, the teachers taking it in. Um, I'm not quite sure if they have the capacity to keep going. That is my fear. Have you lost many um, teachers, um, those that help out so much at Groves? Have you lost a lot of people during this COVID time? I would say surprisingly, and, and the good news for us is, is that because because we've had such a rich tradition and practice of really fostering relationships within the community, so student to staff relationships and staff to staff relationships, when the pandemic hit, many of our teachers who had grown to have a strong uh, connection and affinity for the school have remained with us. Now, that's not to say that we haven't been impacted in other areas of the school's operations um, as we are t- attempting to hire and onboard new teachers and support staff, we, we're feeling the impacts of the, uh, of the job market. The market out there is, is really challenging uh, right now uh, because of the impacts of, of COVID. You know, it's really remarkable. You said that my guest just before you said, wow, you know, there's so many jobs out there. You know, these companies are trying to hire, hire, hire. Yet there are some real challenges with that. And I'm just curious to know if we should, first of all, start thinking about COVID-19 and how it weighed on our children and students and teachers and principals, you name it. And if we can define what recovered even looks like. How would you define recovered from COVID-19 when it comes to that's teaching? Really, yeah, Gerilyn, that's a, that's a really great question. So my, my personal thinking on this is that um, th- there have been some really great school reform efforts underway. And I, I think COVID did two things. COVID sort of accelerated those reform efforts. Now, some districts are having more success than others. But COVID also exacerbated these achievement gaps and mental health challenges for everybody. Uh, we know that there's a, there's a teacher shortage here in Minnesota and regionally and nationally. And so I think that schools and school leaders like myself, we need to be really transparent and authentic and understand that 
the impacts of COVID are not going away. And so I think that it's, it's going to be important for us to remember the, the, the strategies and interventions that we came up with and created during COVID and keep those in place. I think that parents, uh, especially now, my, my sense is that they appreciate what schools do, what teachers in those schools do. And I think teachers have a, a different sort of vantage point now, too. They understand that our profession is absolutely uh, necessary and a, a value part of what we do in the lives of kids. But I think, as I mentioned just a, a couple of seconds ago, it's incumbent upon us leaders to keep this issue present and top of mind because it, the impacts will, will be with us for a while. I don't think we've ever had a decade in our lives where teachers and students both had mental health challenges across the board. Um, and that in itself is very difficult. We are having many challenges. The students are not, um, especially remotely, are having a difficult time trying to understand it or even like it. Um, I remember my oldest granddaughter, who's almost 10 years old, um, she was online one day and I happened to be there making breakfast and having a good time with them. And she says, okay, Grandma, you know, my class is going to open up. When the class opens up, there's no no one <laughs> responsible. There's no adult in the room. And these students are just having a blast trying to figure out, well, where's our teacher? Well, then let's have fun and let's do this. And I thought to myself, we are in deeper trouble than we know, than we know. Now, I know about Groves Academy, and I know how hard you work to make sure that the students get what they need, not just what they want, but what they need uh, in order to succeed in life. Do you feel like you are, are continuing to accomplish that, or you feel like there are still gaps that you have to address? I think, I think we are continuing to accomplish that. Uh, again, Groves was founded some, some 50 years ago, and because we serve children who are struggling with learning disabilities and learning differences, we, we learned a long time before the pandemic hit that that this notion of sustaining, nurturing and sustaining deep relationships uh, was really key. And so we doubled down on those efforts during the pandemic. Uh, we met with students individually in small groups. We listened and responded to the needs of community members, including parents. Um, we also created virtual opportunities for kids who are interested in connecting with peers outside of class. We modified schedules, so we, we sort of doubled down on some of those practices, daily practices that, that we've been known for for years. But it, it was an intentional effort, and we're going to continue those efforts as we're moving forward, keeping kids, their mental health challenges, uh, families, and our teachers at, at the center of everything that we do. How are your, is the retention of, of the teachers? How is that going? Our retention is actually pretty good. We we hired a, a, a recent cohort of teachers. I met with them last uh, week, actually. Uh, so we onboarded ten new staff members. So awesome. ten out of ten out of one hundred and fifty total in our employee group. So that that retention number, I feel good about. I feel good about that. Um, but we're not sitting by and resting on our laurels and being passive about our efforts to recruit caring adults into the building. We, we've, we've got to stay competitive because, as you, as you said, Gerilyn, there's so many jobs out there. And so we want to make sure that we're on the leading edge in the, in the K-12 sector to make sure that we're hiring the, those, those adults that are the best and the brightest and the ones who demonstrate that they truly love kids. You know, I've talked to a couple of parents who actually use the word failed. I failed my children in trying to make sure that they're learning, to make sure that they retain what the teachers are trying to teach them during this pandemic. I mean, my goodness, we've never been through a pandemic like this. This is almost new to us. It was last time it was 1918, unless you want to count, you know, a couple of other um, uh, small <laughs> things that happened. But, I, you know, I keep thinking of that word failed. And um, I, I've even heard that from some children, especially those that are about 11 or 12 years old, are saying that it's just failed. It's it's not helping me. I don't know why I have to do this remote thing. So with monkeypox and so much more happening, what are you looking forward to? We are looking forward to, as I said uh, a little a little bit of go of sustaining the efforts that we that we have in place. One of the things that um, I'm going to be 
you know, pretty intentional about as, as the president of GROWS is to make sure uh, that we know that mental health issues aren't going anywhere. We're, we're going to be honest about that, and we're going to make conscious efforts to help kids get back what they, what they lost. Um, as a part of those efforts, Jeremy, we're going to keep investing in relationships and mm-hmm. making investments in the school and family partnership. And that might look like finding moments throughout the school year or even the school week to, to pause and as a community have those honest conversations about the challenges of the moment. We want to encourage families to talk with us honestly and talk with their kids honestly and we also are going to make sure that we're lifting up the strengths and the assets of all of our students. And, you know, as a K-12 thought leader, I would be um, remiss if I wasn't sort of shouting that to all of my colleagues around the region and around the nation, that we have to be strengths-based and we have to lift up the assets that, that our kids are showing us. Kids are learning differently. They've been more resilient than I think we ever thought they could be. And so I think it's on us as, as leaders of systems and schools and districts to understand what that new learning looks like and uh, accommodate uh, the new ways of being that kids and families are demonstrating. Well, I tell you, um, the one thing I will say that I'm very, very happy about are the libraries in our cities and communities. Um, it is quite remarkable how children have been able to you know, go to the library with their library card or their parents take them to the library and they read and um, all of a sudden they're uplifted. I've seen my youngest um, grandchild who just is real. Let's go to the library and get as many books as we can. And they come back and we read to them and it's just, it's remarkable. Their eyes light up over these stories. And, you know, if there was one thing I would want to collect during this COVID-19 time when it comes to students is to collect those stories where they can actually tell their own story of what it's been like trying to learn during COVID-19. And a lot of these young people are a lot brighter and know so much. They're they're um, almost intuitive, right? They know exactly what they are experiencing and can put it into words. If I could have a book of stories like that, I think it could change the world. I think people could read these stories across the country, across the world, and we would all see what, it, what each thing they're doing, someone else is feeling it, someone else is doing it and I think that would be remarkable. I think I totally agree with that, Gerilyn. I I think embedded in what you've just said is this notion of of curiosity, right? So as kids are understanding the different ways that they have to navigate, you know, this this time, they they are being creative in their expression and they're being creative in how they're learning. And I think the word curiosity is is a very strong word. If we can help our kids no matter what comes our way uh, that we have little or no control over, we can cultivate this this sense of curiosity in our kids, I think we'll be fine. I agree with you on that. I sure hope so. And before you go, tell us a little bit more about Grove's Learning Organization. Sure. Uh, Grove's is a Minnesota nonprofit. We, We like to term ourselves an uh, educational ecosystem that's focused on building confidence, success, and purpose. The academy is our brick-and-mortar school, and our Groves Literacy Partnerships is our initiative to bring evidence-based curriculum into schools around the state. Finally, our Learning Center offers a broad array of services for students throughout the community who are struggling to learn or may be diagnosed with learning disabilities or attention disorders. We're Proud to be a, a player in the Twin Cities K through 12 scene, and we look forward to lifting up our good work and collaborating with with peers across the metro. Well, congratulations on all that you're doing, Brian. It's so good to hear your voice. Thank you for joining us tonight, and I hope people, anyone that needs to know more, please uh, tell us where they could go to call or a website. Absolutely. Uh, www.growslearning.org. And uh, we'd be happy to take a call or or respond to an email. We hope people will reach out to us. and We'd love to learn about you and your children. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Tell everyone hello that are still there, okay? (laughs) Will do. Tell them I said hello. All right, you too. Bye-bye. 
All right, do check into that. So many parents talk about uh, mental capacity, mental health, and so much more. <clears throat> Take a look at Grows Academy. I think you'll you'll understand why this was really important to me tonight.